we're going to make sure that the jury puts the blame where it belongs and it's not on you. Hi, everybody. Today we are talking about motorcyclists, specifically in New York. We're talking about what motorcyclists and drivers overall need to do in New York that maybe other states and other cities don't have to. I'm Christine Haas in this episode of Ask the Lawyers, and I'm delighted to say that we are joined by Mike Greenspan of Greenspan and Greenspan this morning outside of New York, White Plains, New York. Thank you so much for being here, Mike. It's my pleasure. Good to be here. So you have had so many different types of cases from motorcyclists to big rig trucks. Tell me a little bit today about what specifically drivers and motorcyclists need to know in New York that maybe other states they don't have to worry about. Sure. Well, the most important thing that any motorist these days needs to do is before they get out of their house is check their insurance policy. You really need to have a good insurance broker or agent to make sure that you're covered for the things you didn't know you didn't know. Uh, more important. So let's take a look at motorcycles. In New York, the bare minimum insurance limits for any motor vehicle, assuming we're not talking about a commercial vehicle, just for a private passenger, is 25000 per person and $50,000 uh, for, for collision, assuming there are multiple claimants. Now, that really does not cover a whole heck of a lot. But the next thing that's important, though, is and that's what we're just talking about if you're at fault. You're the one who causes someone else to be hurt. Now, as a motorcyclist, you don't have the protection of a vehicle around you. So if someone's going to crash into you because they were distracted, they were going too fast, or just didn't notice you were there, you have to understand that unlike somebody in a car or even in a truck, you will not have the benefit of our no-fault insurance law. So that means that your medical bills, which are collision-related, and as you can imagine, someone who's got hurt, get hits uh, while riding a motorcycle can get hurt very badly, will not be covered by the no-fault insurer, that is the insurer for the vehicle that they were riding. Whereas if they were in a regular car, they would be covered. So that's one of the first things you really need to realize before you get out on the road on a motorcycle. This may sound like a no-brainer question, but it is something that people need to really remember because the anxiety comes over you after you've been in an accident. When you first get into an accident, who is the first person you should call? Well, it's very important that you're, if you're hurt, that a loved one needs to know what has happened and that you're okay or what your situation is, and then they can help you get the help you need. The police are going to need to be informed. But what is important also to remember is there are unfortunately some insurance companies that take advantage of injured people, and they seem to try to target people whose command of the English language isn't so great so that somebody could be recovering, they could be hurt, or just maybe they're just released from a hospital, and suddenly an adjuster comes in from an insurance company telling them it's okay, we're gonna take care of everything. And soon enough, they're gonna have a document in front of them where that injured person may have released all their rights against the person who was responsible for hurting them and destroying their vehicle. It's so interesting because when those accidents happen, of course, you get anxious, you get worried. And so it's important to have this kind of in the back of your head as common sense if, in fact, you are involved in an accident. How does accident fault work in New York? New York is what's called a comparative uh, fault state. So what that means is unlike years ago when we were a contributory negligent state, which meant that if you were at fault even for 1%, you couldn't recover. Today, the law is such that Maybe there are one or more people who are responsible for the crash. So that in this case, even if you as the driver of the vehicle is found to be partly responsible, a jury can apportion liability. Maybe it's 90% on the other vehicle, only 10% to you or anywhere in between. You know, right now, especially in these trying economic times, a lot of people think they can't simply afford an attorney. What do you say to that? Well, the good news for them is that the attorneys like our firm who handle these type of cases, you're not going to pay us a retainer fee. You're not going to give us a check and you're not going to be charged an hourly rate. Instead, you only are going to pay us when we have achieved results for you. And the result in this case is that we have obtained a money judgment, a settlement from the insurer for the at-fault vehicle. So the point is we can work long and we can work hard. And sometimes these cases can take a long time. But in the end, you don't owe us a dime until that insurance company pays you for your pain and suffering and other damages you receive as a result of that crash. 
Are you seeing, if you don't mind I ask, any particular trends right now in your firm or especially, especially in New York regarding motorcycle accidents that people might not be aware of? Yeah, what we are noticing is that, first of all, there's always, there, there, for a long time, there's been a bias against people who ride motorcyclists. Like anything, there are people who abuse the privilege. And so you see if you're stuck in traffic, there's a motorcyclist weaving in and out of lanes, and you wish that uh, they wouldn't do that. So as a result, people tend to look at motorcycle cases a bit more jaded. So if it's going to be a close call, a juror or a fact finder may want to find against that motorcyclist just because of just a bias against them. So it's going to be important to understand that the attorney who's representing, representing the injured motorcyclist takes that into consideration and frames the case appropriately to put the fault on, on where it belongs. And that's on the other vehicle because a motorcyclist have every, has every right to be on the road. And assuming you are riding your motorcycle in a responsible and lawful manner, and someone now decides to make a left turn into you because they weren't paying attention or they were looking at their cell phone or texting, we're going to make sure that the jury puts the blame where it belongs, and it's not on you. And it is terrifying when you're driving down the road and you see a motorcycle is actually texting. You think, my goodness, the liability or the risk right there just being on a motorcycle is obvious. Now you're texting and doing it at the same time. So yeah, you're right. So obvious, but sometimes not always common sense. Can I ask if you have anything else to add? Sure. One of the things that's important is remember when we started out at the beginning, we said how the New York basic insurance limits are 25,000 per person, no more than 50 per collision. Well, one of the reasons I suggested that you really need to speak with your good insurance agent or broker is that Motorists, whether you're on a motorcycle or your private vehicle, you can protect yourself against harm. You can buy appropriate coverage so that in the event that you're injured, you can file something called an, uninsured, an underinsured motorist claim. It's called SUM. Without getting down into the weeds, let's assume that you are doing nothing wrong and someone injures you, but they had bare minimum coverage. If you've protected yourself appropriately and you haven't gotten the cheapest insurance out there, you can make a claim against their vehicle. And then if that's not sufficient to cover injuries, and if you're a motorcyclist, again, those could be quite significant, you can make a claim against your own policy if you've purchased the right coverage for it. So it is really important if you get anything else from this conversation, take a look at your insurance declaration sheet. If you haven't spoken with your insurance agent or broker in a while, do so and make sure that you're protected so that in the event that something bad does happen to you or someone you love, you can make sure that there'll be sufficient coverage available so that when an attorney is hired, we can go out and get the maximum recovery for you. And it's just so important, especially in this world today. Yeah, very true. Very true. Mike Greenspan joining us. Always a wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much for your time today with Greenspan and Greenspan. Always giving us some good tips. Thank you. That's it for the episode of Ask the Lawyer. Choose a lawyer that lawyers choose. You can follow us online. And remember, go to askthelawyers.com anytime you have a question.